Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in San Antonio at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Michael Deeb, who is a professor and leading aortic valve specialist at the University of Michigan Health in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dr. Deeb, it is great to see you and thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. We're at this conference learning great information all about valve disease mm -hmm. and TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement is being talked about a lot. There's been a lot of growth in TAVR. I think now we're up over 100,000 cases and I've got to ask you for patients who may not be familiar with TAVR, what are the big differences between TAVR and a surgical aortic valve replacement? Well, I guess the biggest difference is the amount of trauma that the patient experiences. With uh, open heart surgery, it's actually open heart, whether it's fully invasive, partially invasive, or minimally invasive. And with TAVR, basically it's a needle puncture in the groin, not an incision. We do not stop the heart. On a big video screen, we have images and we pass a wire up. The wire is like a railroad track, and over that wire we have a catheter about as big as my finger, which is hollow. We slide that over, that's the train, and then we have the valve, which is the passenger. And it's in a circular wire frame, and inside are three leaflets made from the heart of a cow or a pig, and the valve's compressed. Slide it up and release it, and it pushes the old valve up and away, and the old valve is never uh, removed. Well, wow, that's fascinating, Dr. Deeb. Can you talk about who are candidates for TAPR? TAPR was first developed for those patients who had aortic stenosis but were older and couldn't undergo the trauma of open heart surgery. But otherwise, if we could get them through the surgery without the trauma, would lead good longer lives. But as time went on and it went so well for that patient population, we went from the non-surgical patients to the, those that had high risk to moderate risk to low risk. So risk has nothing to do with it now. It all has to do with lifetime management. And what does that mean? When, when I see you and you need an aortic valve, I'm not looking at you saying, what procedure am I going to do now for you? I look at you and I say, based on your age, your medical condition, how can I get you from where you're at back on the normal survival curve? How can I get you to say 85 years of age with a minimal number of procedures, the minimal amount of cumulative risk, and a minimal amount of trauma? Dr. Deeb, another question patients may have is, what is the durability of TAVR? Valvular degeneration um, is being quantified differently now. Uh, previously, when we just did surgical valves, we would track the patients to a point where their valve deteriorated and they needed a second surgery, and we called that durability. Now what we're doing is we're following hemodynamics. We're following the gradient, how hard the, the heart has to work, when the valve is starting to fail and redevelop stenosis or develop a leak. And it's showing that, you know, at a four-year period, the hemodynamics in certain tabard valves is better than in the surgical valve. So the degeneration uh, of that valve is less in TAVR as you go out four years. Well, it's encouraging to hear that the data is coming out favorably thus far. It has. And a big question is, what advice might you have for patients out there who might be considering a TAVR? Well, I would, my advice is to go to a multidisciplinary center. Go to a center of excellence where you meet both the cardiologists and the cardiac surgeons in a multidisciplinary clinic at the same time. They're working on the same team. They're, they're not advocating either surgery or TAVR. They're advocating what is best for you, what fits for you in that lifetime management. Well, Dr. Deeb, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world watching this, thanks for everything you and your team are doing at the University of Michigan Health in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you for inviting me.